Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar on teaching rigid body dynamics. My name is Bradley Horton and I'm one of the engineers here at the MathWorks. In today's presentation there are going to be three distinct phases. We'll start out by defining one of the challenges that students face while they're learning about rigid body dynamics. And we think we've got a pretty good antidote for reducing that challenge. And it's this concept called computational thinking. Well, more specifically, how MATLAB supports computational thinking. In the second phase of today's presentation, well, this is really where the rubber hits the road. I'm going to show you three specific case studies of how MATLAB supports computational thinking. And I'll show you how a two-pronged approach using both symbolic and numeric computing can help overcome some of those challenges in learning about rigid body dynamics. And in the third and final phase of today's presentation, we'll make some time to answer some of the questions that you may have, and we'll also tell you how you can get all of the examples that you see demonstrated today. Now I'd like to start with somewhat of a rhetorical question. And that is, if you had a robotic manipulator, such as the one shown on screen right now, how would you make that robot write the word hello? It's not a trick question. Probably one of the first things that any engineer or scientist is going to say is, well, I need a mathematical model. If I have a mathematical model, then we can then use it to support the design task of making the robot move the way we want it to. So the next question shouldn't come as a surprise, right? And that is, well, how do we derive that mathematical model? And the answer to this question involves a series of steps. We first of all need to understand the foundation physics of the system. And this is the really interesting part of the design problem, isn't it? Getting your students to pull together all of the relevant concepts that they've been learning about in the classroom and then applying that knowledge. Now for this particular problem, the Lagrangian approach of solving rigid body dynamics is a useful technique and it's going to be the technique that we use throughout today's presentation. So we take our understanding of the system physics and we perform a series of computations using this Lagrangian technique and bada bing bada boom out pops the mathematical description of the machine in this case a system of nonlinear ordinary differential equations. And then we take this mathematical description and then we then implement it in some simulation environment. Now if we just pause for a moment, I'd like to point out that you know one of the realities in deriving these mathematical descriptions is that the derivations can become computationally expensive when they're done by hand, you know, using pen and paper. Now as a concrete example of that last remark, Consider the amount of effort associated with deriving by hand the equations of motion of a simple double link pendulum and compare that with say the four degree of freedom non-planar robotic manipulator that we saw earlier. There are around about 30 lines of terms that capture the math of the double pendulum. There are approximately 200 lines of terms for the corresponding ODEs for the Fordoff robotic manipulator. Now 200 lines of hand computations, that's a bit of a buzzkill, right? Students aren't going to be running to your door asking for more of that. So if we're wanting to encourage students to adopt a deeper learning mindset to their studies, then we need a way of reducing the hand computational effort associated with the learning experience. Now let me clarify that last remark. When rigid body dynamics is taught, it usually starts by using a small case study system, something like a spring mass damper or even that double link pendulum that you saw before. And the underlying physics of the case study is explored in class. And then students get to apply their understanding of these concepts by doing a series of problems using pen and paper. And that act of solving these problems helps to reinforce the understanding of the foundation physics. Now if we introduce the terminology conceptual difficulty and computational difficulty, it becomes a little clearer on why for these smaller problems at least, 
that the use of pen and paper really is an appropriate medium. For small scale problems, the amount of hand computational effort does not dominate the time that the student is spending thinking about the problem. But this balance between conceptual difficulty and computational difficulty really starts to change as we ask students to explore bigger size problems. Now take that Ford-Off robotic manipulator example. When you study this type of machine, there are certainly new and more difficult concepts that a student needs to understand. But when we ask students to apply these concepts to practice problems using pen and paper, the corresponding increase in computational effort grows significantly. The amount of computational effort now dominates the learning experience. And for many students, the benefit of, of solving practice problems to reinforce the target concepts, well, these benefits contract because they're so overwhelmed in doing those hand calculations. So what are the alternatives? Well, if we lived in the year 1917, I'd say your alternatives were slim. But thankfully, we live in the year 2017, and we have a teaching and learning approach called computational thinking. Now, in computational thinking, we still get the students to use their brains, but we use computing technology to overcome the hand computational difficulties associated with learning. When you remove the burden of those massive hand computations, then students can spend more time thinking and practicing the concepts that you want them to know about. So to be very clear, computational thinking is not about getting computers to think for the student. No, it's not about that at all. Computational thinking is actually about encouraging the complete opposite. We want the students to spend more time thinking and less time doing tedious hand computations. So that's the theory. Next, let's talk about some of the ways that MATLAB supports this computational thinking approach. Today, I'm going to show you three ways that MATLAB supports computational thinking. Firstly, we have the new live editor, which allows you to capture not only the technical solution of a problem, but it also captures the reasoning, the thought process, processes behind the proposed solution. Secondly, we have what I like to call the tedium busters. And these are the capabilities within MATLAB that reduce the amount of hand computations that students need to do. Specifically, applying the chain rule of differentiation, and secondly, the automatic conversion of symbolic expressions into simulink blocks. And finally, we'll demonstrate how you can take the derived equations of motion and use them within a simulation. And we're going to use simulation as a tool for making the mathematics do useful things. There's not much point in just staring at an equation, right? So the three case studies that we're going to use today to demonstrate this computational thinking approach are the spring mass damper, an oldie but a goodie, the two degree of freedom non-planar robotic manipulator, and finally, the four degree of freedom robotic manipulator, which we're going to make right hello. Now for each of these examples, we're going to derive the system's equations of motion. And in all of these case studies, we're going to apply the exact same workflow. And that is, we'll introduce the conceptual topics that are relevant to each example, and then we'll use the computational thinking approach to help us derive the equations of motion. Once we've created this mathematical description, we'll then explore the system dynamics by doing simulations.